what you just went through is the exact narrative that I've been sharing oftentimes that I have concerns over. Right. I have some serious concerns um, because we have seen recently declines in, in turkey hunter satisfaction. The number one factor driving that is numbers, right? Uh, first, ahead of all the season stuff, like if you want – if you want turkey hunter satisfaction to increase, make more turkeys. And that's one of the reasons that I focus so strongly on habitat is because it's still undefeated, right? Habitat makes more turkeys. Um, another thing I wanted to get into as well is the, the debate over season timing. Yeah. Okay. So there's a little bit of a sticky subject maybe. Yeah. But we're going we're gonna to talk about right. it. Right. So uh, the, over the last couple of years, you've seen multiple states, Alabama included, uh, pushing their their seasons back, basically. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think might butcher this. I think it's 14 states over the past decade right. or so have made a made a change to dates. With with the idea being that it, when you're shooting turkeys, when you're shooting gobblers specifically too early, mm-hmm. they they haven't gone through their breeding process. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got to work out their pecking order, and then you know the mm-hmm. boss gobbler gets to breed the hens. And basically, if you kill him, you're just setting back that nest initiation so when mm-hmm. the when the hens are going to nest you're setting that time back and if the hens aren't going to nest until early summer mm-hmm. or too late then that that kills your chances of poult survival like mm-hmm. your your poults aren't going to live yeah so did i did i do that justice close enough yeah okay so all that stuff about the breeding system of turkeys is absolutely true like that all that transpires i don't know if you want to go into the whole story about it but i can describe how it happens from the time that they're together during fall and winter sorting out the pecking hierarchy all the way to when they start breeding and then the hens go off to nest in spring um but yes there are dominant gobblers there are gobblers that do most of the breeding there is a pecking order all that stuff is true and what that led i mean this is this is an idea that has become recently popular because this is the subject of much debate you know and people feel very strongly about the timing of their turkey seasons but there have been biologists going back decades that have said hey maybe if we start hunting them too early this could mess things up a bit and it it's a logical argument right like if they're that strongly bound to that hierarchy and those hens are making the choice of what who they're going to mate with that bird gets shot you could easily see how it would disrupt things um, so it is an, in, it's, it, it makes sense from a biological perspective, but what we don't know is how much of, uh, the reproductive output in a turkey population is influenced by that versus how much of it is influenced by a variety of other factors like habitat from the data that I've seen, you know, turkey reproduction is much more strongly influenced by habitat than anything else. And that's true for almost any species. And out of just kind of like my short version answer to your question, we could we could go two or three hours on this topic, you know, if we if we wanted to. Uh, but my short answer to that is that there have now been several experiments that have tried to show, you know, what the effect of potentially starting hunting earlier versus later is. The Tennessee being kind of the crown jewel example of that of those experiments, and we still we have not found any kind of linkage between you know, nest success, brood survival, or ultimately what we really care about is turkey recruitment and the timing of the hunting season. Right. Yeah. And that's the, the study I mentioned earlier with Dr. Craig Harper in Tennessee. So that's, I went to his talk at the NWTF convention last year and he was talking about that. And I Mm -hmm. mean, he was pretty straightforward about it. He's like, guys, this ain't it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they had a really strong experiment. Um, And to put it into context, it is rare in wildlife science that we're able to create such a strong experiment like a lot of times what we do is we're forced to just look at look for correlations right oh this area over here they hunt a little sooner this area over here they hunt a little bit later well let's see uh if this one's got higher reproductive output than the other one well the problem with that is that there's all sorts of things besides when they hunt that differ between those two properties y'all know how it is like all hunters know how it is like one property is always an individual and it's going to be unique compared to all others um so instead, they had this opportunity where they, they delayed the season by 14 days um, in some of the counties, and in the other counties, they kept it sa- the same, and they were able to you know have that before, after, with the control that never changed, and look at, okay, do we see a difference in timing of reproduction, nest success, brood survival, go on down the list um, on the properties that were delayed versus the non-delayed. And do we see a difference before versus after the delayed occurred on the sites that got delayed? 
and they have data for several years before the delay was implemented and now several years after, and they're, they weren't able to pick up a signal from any of it. So on that study, like, again, the, didn't really find the, the correlation or whatever, but, again, one thing I want to bring up again was the hunter satisfaction part of that study where right. where people – it, it was kind of interesting. I wish I had. I, could, I wish I could remember the exact statistics, but it was, uh, you know, X number of guys kill one bird a year. X number of guys kill, or percentage of guys kill two, mm-hmm. and this percentage actually shoot their limit. It was mm-hmm. a very small percentage actually shoot more than one bird a year. Yeah, and that's pretty consistent across states. We right. See. So, so that kind of goes into the bag limit part, and then the the hunter satisfaction about goblin, and then also the uh, aspect of how many guys are actually hunting. Mm-hmm outside of the first two weekends Mm -hmm. of the season. So the vast majority of your pressure, it seemed like, was on opening weekend and the weekend after that. That's right. And then after that, you know, it it declined pretty hard. And I think, I don't remember if if Harper talked about this or if I was maybe talking to Mark or somebody afterwards about it, but kind of asking about why that is. And part of it is starting to get hot. It's Mm -hmm. starting to get buggy. Uh, the crop ear biting. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of things that are going to pull people out of the turkey woods. And, mm-hmm. and one thing that I think me and Mark talked about specifically was w- one of my worries with if you keep pushing the season back and back and back, if you're affecting that that uh, hunter satisfaction so much that people start dropping off and you start losing people, which there's, you know, some people make an argument that's probably a good thing that yeah. you don't have as many turkey hunters. But on the other side, kind of like what we talked yeah. about earlier, that's less people who are going to be invested in the habitat management, uh, advocating for, you know, better, more fire on the landscape, um, and uh, and other things of that nature. So I, I'm just curious on your perspective on that. What you just went through is the exact narrative that I've been sharing oftentimes that I have concerns over. Right. I have some serious concerns um, because we have seen recently declines in, in turkey hunter satisfaction. The number one factor driving that is numbers, right? Uh, first, ahead of all the season stuff, like if you want if you want turkey hunter satisfaction to increase, make more turkeys. And that's one of the reasons that I focus so strongly on habitat is because it's still undefeated, right? Habitat makes more turkeys. Um, and habitat management, I'll throw this out there too. Y'all love it. Habitat management is predator management. That's, oh, I was going to bring it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was about to Stir ask. Stirring the pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we can get more into that if y'all want to. If we have, I don't know if we're going to have time today. But, um, but yes, like, you know, I'm afraid that we're kind of at this critical point where if, you know, it, it goes back to the conversation that we are having just a moment ago, we still have enough turkey hunters attention captured to have them active and engaged as opposed to the quail hunters that have gone you know the way of the dinosaur we don't have nearly as many of those anymore although i am seeing a little resurgence and some younger guys getting bird dogs now that's that's exciting um but i want to take advantage of the fact that we still have this critical mass and so along with that i do want you know to make sure that we're considering um hunter satisfaction in all the ways that we're approaching turkey management so that we can keep that group engaged so that we can have hope for conservation of the bird. And I know my colleague, I I wish he could have been there here this morning. You know, we were trying to get all of us on the, on the podcast at the same time, but Marcus Lashley, he's actually got some folks in on his staff right now that are looking at this question of how do different uh, parameters that we tweak in terms of Turkey hunting regulations actually affect hunter satisfaction. Um, So I really look forward to seeing those data as well, because that is important information for us to know. 